Well, good afternoon, everyone. You're doing okay today? Yes. Yeah. All right, good. At least I heard a couple of you are doing okay. That, that's good to hear. Now, I'm going to move around a little bit because I, I like to interact with, with who I'm meeting with today. My name, again, is Jeff Porter, and I work with the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and I am on the manure management team. And there is actually a team within NRCS, and for those of you who may be familiar with this, my, my former supervisor, uh, Bill Boyd, he would always introduce our team as, uh, since he was the team leader, he was number one, and since I was the team, I'm number two. You know, when you're talking with manure, you know, that kind of makes some sense. But now that he is retired, I am now both number one and number two. So take that however you would like. Uh, today, I'm, you're not going to see any numbers. You're not going to see any research. What you're going to see today is a document that I'm pretty excited about that's going to be coming out. A document that's going to be focusing on solid liquid separation, how we handle these manures, and the different techniques and technologies that can be used in, in dealing with the solid liquid situation. And it's going to go even much deeper than that. I'm going to share some of those things here in just a moment. You know, as we work with animal waste sy uh, systems and situations, this is what we see so many times, isn't it? We have a jigsaw puzzle. Now, unfortunately, many of our jigsaw puzzles, we don't even have a picture to look at. It's kind of like we, we've got the puzzle pieces upside down. And so all we have are the pieces, and we've got to try to put these things together. And as we work with landowners, as you deal with different situations, what we have to do as our goal is to take these puzzle pieces and to begin to put them together to make this puzzle look like something that's going to help this landowner meet the resource concerns that they may have, to help reach the, the regulatory requirements to meet those, or whatever it may be for that particular landowner, we're taking those puzzle pieces. And over time, as we begin to, to deal with different situations, such as solid liquid separation, the, the picture begins to, tar to take shape. And we begin to, to see what this is hopefully going to look like. And we continue to work with the landowner. We continue to do different things to, to help them, again, meet those resource concerns and to try to do the things to, to meet those goals, to whatever those objectives may be. And finally, you come up with a complete picture. Now, this picture may change over time as well, but at least now we've, we see what we're doing and we see that we have now been able to reach those goals at this particular time. And we've been able to help that landowner reach the, the, the goals that they wanted to reach or what, whatever the situation may be as they're trying to deal with the soil, the water, the air, the plants, the animals, the energy resource, all those resource concerns, we're trying to help them deal with those. And it's no different with the soil, or with the solid liquid separation. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is this document that is being put together. So I'm just briefly going to share with you some of the background of why we actually put this document together, share with you a little bit of the contents that you're going to find in this document. And then some of the uses and the users uh, for this document that is actually being put together, if you don't mind. Many of you know through NRCS, and actually I've heard through several of the presentations, that NRCS has conservation practice standards. We have over 160 of these practice standards, and actually Glenn mentioned that during the, the luncheon keynote address. Thank you so much, Glenn, on that. Now, 20 plus of those are actually manure related, dealing with waste management practices and applications. So what we're, we're doing with this is we're, we're trying to take this particular document to help to enhance these practices, to help, again, the landowner to meet the goals and the objectives that they may have. You can use solid liquid separation for like the, the waste storage facility standard that we have. Maybe for waste treatment, you can use solid liquid separation. Whatever the practice related to animal waste, you might be able to utilize solid liquid separation. We actually have a standard that used to be called solid liquid waste separation facility. Well, now it's just called waste separation facility. So if you're having trouble finding it on our webpage, it's because the name has changed. What we're trying to do again is we want to address these situations of where we think this particular document will be helpful in those who are designing, those who are teaching, those who are helping to plan, to help these landowners reach their goals and their objectives. 
And as we began to look through the, the literature, internet searches, checking different technical uh, documents, we did not find a good single document that would cover all of the areas of solid liquid separation. So we decided we need to, to put together a document that could help not only NRCS, but hopefully anyone else who's dealing with the whole area of waste management. The first thing we had to come down or come up with is, is how are we going to put this thing together? Because we knew this was going to be quite a task. And as we looked throughout our agency, we were even concerned of whether we had the, the technical expertise to actually put together such a document. So we had to, to come up with a way of, of actually getting someone to help us with this. And those who may be familiar with the CESU uh, process, uh, we began to work with Clemson University through this, this procedure to get someone to help us put together this document. And I don't know if John is in here or not. Uh, Dr. John Chastain, he is the one that we've been using to put together this document. And he has been tremendous. He has spent not just weeks, not just, not just months, but he's been working years on this document for us. We've actually been working on it for five years. And it has a lot of, of good technical information. And it just has a, a, a lot of things to help deal with this whole issue of solid liquid separation. The goal of this document, or the goal for, for NRCS for this document, was just to be a 70 to 100 page document so people could, could scan through it. But you can see, as you look at this document, it's much more than 70 to 100 pages. Uh, the, the current version, this is still in draft. We're now up to nearly 300 pages in our document. Uh, John is going through another revision at this time. He's told me that he's added a couple more sections. So we're going to be well over 300 pages in this document. So it's going to be covering, and as we look at the contents, you're going to see we're covering a lot of things in this one document. Again, hopefully it's, it's kind of a, a one-shot document for dealing with solid waste separa separation. We hope to have the document done, at least from a draft standpoint, by June of this year. Again, that's our goal. And what that means is that we're still going to have to go through uh, some reviews. We'll have some of our other environmental engineers and other some staff to, to review it. It has to be reformatted in some of these different types of things. And then we're going to be putting this into our National Engineering Handbook series. Now, where that's going to go just yet, we don't know. We're still working on that, trying to figure out where it's going to best fit. And what we will do is once that is finished and is published, we will use uh, different methods to try to get that information out to you to let you know that this document is ready to be utilized for all of you that are interested in solid liquid separation. So some of the contents, let's just share with you a little bit some of the things that we're going to be covering in this document that could maybe help you in, in your processes as you're, as you're working with farmers or as you're teaching or whatever method you may potentially use this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what are the methods a solid liquid separation. And we're going to be looking at you know, how, how do you determine what process is actually taking place? You know, whether we're looking at particle size, and we have different practices, different applications that, that do uh, deal with the size of the particles, such as screens, and, and dealing with uh, other, other practices, uh, belt presses, dealing with incline screens, dealing with uh, screw presses, these types of things, most of those do focus on the size of the particles. Then they also have other practices that are focusing in on the density of the particles. And you have there your gravity systems, you're going to, to also deal with uh, cyclones, centrifuges, some of these types of things. And those are all described in this document. They also have pictures, so you have an idea what they look like. We talk about some of the performance of each of these systems and, and how they would work within different types of, of animal systems. Then we're going to look at how, look at how the, the manure characteristics do affect the performances of these different types of systems. We'll be looking at the animal types. We'll look, be looking at the different types of housings and how that would affect, let's say, the, the percentage of solids versus the percentage of liquids in these systems. Then we're going to be also covering in that same section, what are the benefits of the whole area of solid liquid waste separation? So we're going to talk about you know, 
What are we going to do with, can we use this for bedding? Can we do some nutrient partitioning? Can we also assist with irrigation systems by removing some of those solids? Those types of things are going to be discussed in this, this document. Then there will be some, some, just some fundamental information on what is solid liquid separation. And, and talk about some of the, the different issues of, of how the screening work. And what are the impacts of entrainment when you have some of these larger particles that can actually cover some of the screen sizes and, and can retain some of the smaller particles. So that's going to be discussed and, and it'll kind of explain what some of the impacts of that would be. And then we're going to be looking at some of the different theories that are dealing with, with settling based on particle size, based on the density of particles, uh, looking at the dilution factors and some of these types of things to see how that's going to affect this whole issue of solid liquid separation. Then we're going to cover areas of, of how do you uh, determine how well these things perform. How does this screw press perform compared to an inclined screen? And then it will, will look at different ways because it's really important for, for you as designers, for a landowner to know how this information is being reported in the literature. Are they looking at it from a concentration reduction? Or are they actually looking at it from a mass removal? And, and they're two totally different things. And we need to understand that and, and how the mechanisms work and how you actually do the calculations for those particular areas to know what system is going to work best for you or for the, the landowner. We'll also be looking at some different ways of, of actually increasing the performance uh, of some of these, these systems using flocculants using coagulants. We'll be focusing on some of the different types of polymers, metal salts that are out there, and see how that would improve the performance of these separation uh, devices. It will also be looking at how can you improve nutrient partitioning, because we have seen through many of the studies that I have looked at, that by using these coagulants and flocculants, you can, you can remove 90 plus percent of your phosphorus. You can remove 60 plus percent of your nitrogen can be found in your solids by utilizing some of these, these techniques and technologies. I will also be looking at some of the advanced uh, innovative technologies, some that are still kind of on the cutting edge. Uh, we, we, we have different things uh, like struvite formation. Uh, we have some of the me membrane filtration technologies that are out there, uh, electrocoagulation. So those are described and, and see how they can potentially be used within the, the whole realm of solid-liquid separation. And as we deal with dairies, and, and again across the country as I travel, sand bedding is very, very popular. Many dairy operators love the use of sand, but sand creates a lot of havoc when you're talking about mechanical separators and, and different things such as that, and, and just, just the whole handling process of sand. So we, we have a whole section that's going to be discussing the whole issue of sand-laden manure. We're going to talk about the dilution factor of, of sand. How do you get that, that the sand and the manures all separated? So we're trying to, to explain some of those things. We'll be looking at the mechanical uh, means that are available to them, such as the McClanahan, the Parks, and some of these, these other types of, of mechanical separators. Then we'll also be looking at some of these non-mechanical types of things, such as your settling lanes, you're just your, your typical settling basin, and kind of discuss how these different ones work, how well they perform, and so that landowners can decide what's going to work best for me and for the operation that, that I would have. We'll be looking at some other separation methods, and I know others here have, have probably used the, the weaving wall design. That's going to be discussed, and some of the design criteria is going to be outlined in that. We'll be looking at the use of the geo, geo bags, geo textiles. Uh, I've actually been on several projects where we've, we've used the geotextiles and we've been getting more than 99% solid removal. We've been getting 95 plus percent of phosphorus removal through the use of these geotextiles. Also be uh, focusing a little bit on some sand filtration methods and some discussion will be done on that. And then one of the nice things, it doesn't just say, okay, here are the devices that you can use. There's actually some design criteria, some processes that you can go through of designing these, these particular practices. We'll, we'll be looking at, okay, what if I use one unit process? Let's say I'm going to use one screw press. What impact is that going to have? 
and there will be some discussion on, on these different types of practices. Then it says maybe you want to get a higher percentage of your solids out, or you want to get a higher percentage of a particular nutrient. But then it goes through a multi-stage design process of actually linking these different unit processes together to see how well they will perform. And another nice thing that, that we've added to this is that we do have a cost-benefit analysis. Some of that has been put in this, this document, so it's really a good thing to have. So you can start doing some comparison. What if I buy this? What impact is that going to have on the cost of the operation? So uh, really pretty, pretty proud of what John has done on that particular part of the document. We've also added in the appendices a couple other nice features. Uh, I have worked very closely with an organization that's, that's known as the Farm Pilot Project Coordination Group out of Tampa, Florida. I have been able to visit many of their projects. And one of the things is they, they have final reports for all these projects, but they have not been summarized. Because many of these reports, two, three, four hundred pages, fifty pages, and they may not totally cover or the whole project may not just be solid lipid separation, may have several different components. Well, what John has done, which is really a nice thing, he's gone through every one of their final reports, and he's pulled out the components dealing with solid <laughs> liquid separation, and he's evaluated those, he's provided his comments, and has provided the results for that. So that's going to be a really nice feature to look at, because the real benefit of these FPPC projects is that these are farm scale. These are not lab scale, not bench scale. These are full farm scale projects. So you can see how they're performing on, on a full farm. And then as I talked a little bit about the coagulants and the flocculants, he's added a section in there on uh, how do you use those products? How do you do a jar test? How do you evaluate a particular polymer to see that it's going to work for that, that operation? Because it is different for different farms. It's different for different animal types. So he has added that feature, which I think is really going to be a valuable tool in this document. So who's going to be using it? Well, originally this was set up for NRCS planners, those who are working with landowners to help them discuss with, with the landowners what options are available to them. But we see that it's going to be much, much more than that. As, as John has gone through and put all these different sections together, we see that it does provide real good design guidance. Well, as, as you work with a landowner, technical service providers, other designers can use this as a tool to help them, again, work with the landowners to actually evaluate these tools that are out there, these different technologies, where you can go and you can say, okay, how's this going to work from a a, a mass concentration reduction, or are we going to be, or a, a mass reduction, or are we going to look at a concentration reduction? So you can do those comparisons of those different tools to see, again, what's going to work best for that particular farmer. But again, the nice feature that I see in here, since this is a, a public document, it's going to be available for anybody who wants to use it. For those in universities, those who are in other agencies, anyone who would like to use this is going to be available. So I encourage you to, once it, it is available, and hopefully we're going to have that within the next few, few months, uh, we have to complete the draft, and then we'll review it for the editors, and then we'll be placing that within, again, the National Engineering Handbook series, and we'll, we'll get that, that information available. I know we do have a listserv that we're going to definitely get that sent out. If, if anybody here belongs to the, the listserv called AWMIT, if you're on that, we'll definitely be getting that information out to you, and we'll try to find some other avenues <coughs> to let you know how that's going to be done. So with that, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> so you're not making the draft available? Uh, the draft, no, we're, we're, we want to go through and get, get all the, the bugs, and there's still a lot of misspellings and, and a few things that we want to, want to go through. We may get a few select people. If, if maybe we have some who would be interested in reviewing, uh, please let me know, and, and we can maybe get that out to, to let, again, that select few to do that review. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Oh, here's the offer now, so.